Hey everybody, uh, Mr. James here and we are just continuing our look at Bootstrap and having our MVC4 template updated with the look and feel for that the, the Bootstrap CSS and JavaScript libraries have to offer. So I just wanted to hit you really quickly here with this updated template. When I left you, the home page looked something like this. Now, I said it was a little bit of a exercise for the reader or viewer, as you may be and uh, to just kind of flesh out some of the other things and make it look a little bit better. Uh, fix that hero unit a little bit and uh, maybe get something going down at the bottom of the page uh, so that it didn't look as ours as it does. So I just wanted to show you what it looks like and a couple of the things that I did in order to make it look a little bit better. So very quickly here, I'm gonna pop into my updated view. Now to make it look like this, you can see here I've got some updates in here uh, just to make this look a little bit better and just to switch back again uh, really quickly. Um, you can see that I've kind of styled out this bottom area here and then um, for the learn more links I've changed those over to buttons and then finally in this hero unit up top I've kind of changed the way that this, this mark was set up. Uh, from this highlighted kind of syntax and I switched that over to some of the more stylized version of what uh, the bootstrap uh, library has to offer. So I'm just gonna get throw this garbage away here and we're gonna have a look at this new updated thing. First of all something that I did add here was making it responsive so you can see as the browser resizes we're actually getting this updated view where this thing shrinks down making it very friendly for mobile devices that's something that's also included for free with bootstrap awesome sauce so how do we make all this happen we got this we've got, gone away with that highlighting done away with that highlighting we've put in these uh, labels here we've got some nice buttons going on here we've got these wells that are referred to um, with a, just a nice accented border and a kind of a um, little bit of a subdued background or whatever. Um, I've got some icons going in here as well. Let's have a look at how we made that happen. Going back into our Visual Studio template, in the old version we had left the uh, bundles looking something like this in the bundle config. Now that's located under app start. This is, if you haven't, if you didn't see the first uh, couple of episodes, the app start um, folder contains in the new updated MVC4 template the configuration files for bundles for routes and filters thus cleaning up our global ASAX quite a, f quite a bit and it's also nice because rather than doing some voodoo in the back end the MVC4 engine is actually giving us a chance to inter interject here and say no do you know what timeout these are the bundles these are the JavaScript files that I want included these are the styles that I want included and so that's where I started um, I popped over, so I'm just going to do away with that garbage, and let's pop open our project here. Uh, first of all, clean this up a fair bit. I took out the jQuery UI things that I wasn't using, and the basically just stripped it right down to the pieces that I needed. Uh, an important note here, I did add uh, Bootstrap Responsive. Uh, .css and uh, I've got jQuery and Bootstrap rolled up into the same bundle. I did do one other thing as well. Bootstrap uses uh, one of the new uh, replacements for the live or the delegate. Uh, some of those uh, older ways to attach event handlers for long running things that we want persistent inside the browser for events. So I updated the jQuery package simply by going into the package manager console and typing update package jQuery and um, just by doing that I, it goes and gets the latest version for me. Now in this case I've already updated the package so there's no updates to perform. It's gonna whine here a little bit. There it goes. No updates for jQuery. So I did do those things. Now uh, and then I reduced my bundles of course. Now in order to start using the JavaScript we're gonna also do one other thing here. We're gonna go into our references and we're gonna update this guy right here. You can see that I've added after jQuery. First of all I updated jQuery to uh, reference the path uh, 172 and I've also added bootstrap.js. This is really important and it's a great feature in Visual Studio 2012. This gives me IntelliSense as I type and this is where uh, the uh, IDE actually picks up the 
IntelliSense uh, annotations that it needs in order to actually give us our um, parameters as we go and, and, and things like that. Um, that's a great feature if you use IntelliSense, and I do, and I love that. Um, now, a couple of other things. I up upgraded it so that the uh, brand was rendering correctly. In the layout here, I was actually rendering on, uh, where is my uh, title here? Uh, this brand. I was actually doing an HTML action link inside that, whereas all I really need to use is URL.action, and then of course leave the text your logo here in line, and then that cleans up our brand. And just to understand what that means again, I'll flip back to our page. That is so that this is rendering with the correct height. Your logo here, that's our brand kind of area. Okay, so um, next on the list was uh, basically some gratuitous use of style. I went into my index page. Uh, you can see here that I pulled apart that area that was previously marked as mark um, with the highlighted text, and I changed that over to some spans. I've added labels with just three different styles that they've got built into Bootstrap. Uh, success, inverse, and info, or uh, green, uh, inverse is black. This is all white on text, So, and then this info is kind of this I'm colorblind. It looks like it's a teal or something, but whatever. Uh, then finally, I went down into this bottom part. And I kind of pulled apart where these OL and LI item and items were, where they had these uh, the numbered one, two, three thing down at the bottom. I changed that from the order list into this row and span series, um, kind of like our new man's. Um, uh, table in HTML5 friendly, CSS friendly, post-1997 friendly. I've used rows and spans uh, as classes on my divs, and I organize these things. I put the wells inside the spans, for example. Um, it's important if you, if you start noticing that your layout doesn't go exactly as you thought it would. For example, if you had put your well up at the top here, well, well actually adds some extra padding and spacing around things so you can't put it on the on the div that defines the width so where I'm defining that span 6 if I add well to that class as well as well 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 to the element if I add an additional class of well to the element the div element that I'm using then I'm gonna get some extra padding and stuff in there it's gonna start knocking things off. So what this does is when I do a span 6 and a couple of span 3's, so it kind of lays it out nicely for me. So uh, again, I'm going to pull up the view of this um, site here and you can see uh, it looks, hey, it looks pretty good. I think it looks okay. It looks fairly bootstrappy. I got some responsive design going. That's the update. Uh, I'm going to push the, the code here uh, as quick as I can up on a GitHub. But thanks for um, checking this out and sticking with me. Again, uh, I am Mr. James, and we're going to look at the very interesting element uh, that you know and love called a checkbox on our very next episode. Check you soon.